All of my life, I'll say yes, Lord. All of my life, I've been truly blessed, Lord. You have given me my salvation. I'll say yes, yes, Lord. All of my life, I'll say yes, Lord. All of my life, I have been truly blessed. You have given me my salvation. I'll say yes, yes, Lord. All of my life, I will say yes, Lord. Come on, give God a praise. All of my life, you sing it with me. I'll say yes, Lord. You got it. All of my life, I've been truly blessed, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have given me my salvation. I'll say yes. Come on, tell him yes. I'll say yes. Yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Come on, tell him yes this morning. Come on. Yes. Yes, Lord. Lord, I'll put your hands together, people of God. Give God a praise. Father, we thank you now for your spirit that's made perfect in our weakness. We thank you for the opportunity just to say yes, God. We thank you, God, for who you are and what you are in our lives. We thank you, God, because you opened up doors for us. You provided for us. You've made a way for us. You've lifted us up above our circumstances. You've lifted us even in the midst of our enemies. You fed us. You've clothed us. You've given us the activity of our limbs. And for this, we say yes. We say yes, God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way, God. We say yes to your will, God. Anything you want us to do, God, we say yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I say yes to you, Father. Now come into our hearts and speak to our lives, God. Give us the manna from heaven, the word that's rich with power, the word, God, that moves like never before. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. amen. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. 
I will. I'll say it. I'll say yes, God. Whatever you want me to do. I know that was God because I hadn't talked to him since the last time he's been here. And that is part that's in our message about telling God yes. God has a way of confirming his spirit. Confirming his word. You know, church, I'm looking for a time when we catch on fire. When we catch on fire. When the glory of the Lord is revealed in our hearts okay, and just, in our presence. Uh, if you could come and uh, celebrate with us. Is that all right? Amen, somebody. Is that all right? First Kings, First Kings, the 19th chapter. First Kings, the 19th. Y'all got to talk back to me. First Kings, the 19th chapter. I'm going to read. You don't have to stand. I'm going to do the reading. I want you to follow along with me. 19 says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all he had slain all of the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life, or he ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah. Someone say Beersheba. Which belongeth to Judah. Which belongeth to Judah. And left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Someone say the wilderness. And it came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough, or I have had enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life. In other words, kill me, for I am not no better than my father's. Verse number five says, And as he lay, and slept under the juniper tree. Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Verse number six says, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking to the coals, or baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time. And touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Verse number eight says, And then he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And I want to use for our thought on this morning, when you have had enough, God is enough. When you have had enough, God is e enough. Just tell your neighbor, neighbor, when you've had enough, God is enough. As believers in Christ, we celebrate the fact that we are all different in many ways. What one person may like, the other person, on the other hand, may not necessarily like that. Some of us may rather go home and watch football when others would like to curl up with a good book, a cup of tea, and read that book. Some of us like chicken, and some of us don't. Brady, some of us like chitlins. And those that are not delivered yet, you just don't. Because that's the 11th commandment, thou shalt eat a chitlin or two. <laughs> because of our diversity, we should celebrate the fact that we all have a couple things in common. Even though we are diverse, we look different, we act different, we talk different, there are different things that we like to do. The fact of the matter is, we do have some things in common. We have one thing that we choose to have in common, and the other thing we don't choose at all. As a matter of fact, we all have it in common, but we don't choose it. 
The one thing that we choose in common is that we all are in here to seek the face of God, or at least we should be. Our purpose when coming into the house of God should be at a time when we want to come and seek God's face and say, God, whatever I need you to do, I'm coming to seek your face. And so we all have this in common, that we're here to seek God's face. Matthew 6 and 33 requires of us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto me. What things? All of the things that you need. But in order to get what you need, you've got to learn how to seek the face of God. Romans 12 describes the body of Christ as being many members with different functions, but of the same body. We have the same goal, and that is to seek the face of God. And because we come unified, someone say together, someone say together again, when we come Come unified together seeking the face of God. Uh, the devil then understands that our unity brings strength. And when we are unified, we get strength from one another. So we choose to unify because when we are together, someone say together, we are strengthened. And since we are together and we become strengthened, the problems that we have seem minimal because we've got someone praying for us. The problems that we have seem like we can get through it because we got someone thinking about us. We got someone picking up the phone call saying I love you and I'm here to help you is there anybody in here that's had somebody tell them that you mean the world to me I know things don't go the y'all don't hear what I'm saying the way that you should but you mean the world to me because you're my brother and my sister and so the devil understands that if our unity our unified force in coming together brings us the ability to seek God together he then gives Gives us that one thing that we don't ask for we don't ask for it but we all get it and that thing is trouble someone say trouble trouble comes to us in every aspect of our lives we see trouble everywhere we turn and just when we think that our trouble is over somehow the trouble begins to come back to us that thing that we thought we defeated still gets to us and so there's so much trouble in our lives that people have wrote the song when the psalmist wrote trouble in my way uh, I have to cry sometime uh, is there anybody in here that's had to cry sometime uh, sometimes you thought that you was going to lose your mind uh, and all you had to do was cry uh, you went home grabbed your pillow uh, and sobbed like a little baby uh, is there anyone in here uh, that's ever been through some stuff uh, that's caused you some pain and tears uh, some suffering and turmoil uh, and all you could do it was cry uh, so the psalmist wrote trouble in my way uh, I have to cry sometime uh, I lay awake at night uh, but what I like about this is he gives us a way out uh, when he said that, that's all right uh, cause Jesus will fix it after a while uh, I've come to tell you no matter what you're going through, huh, Jesus will fix it after a while. Huh? No matter what you are experiencing, huh? Jesus will fix it after a while. Huh? All right you this morning, y'all. Huh? The one thing huh, that we face is trouble. Huh? And the one thing about trouble, y'all, huh, is that it has no respect of person. Uh, the one thing about trouble, y'all, huh, is it does not discriminate. Huh? It doesn't matter your sex. Huh? It doesn't matter your race, creed, or color trouble will find you some way there are times when you think you're fleeing trouble but trouble 
has a way of finding you. You leave the you leave your home in a happy mood, and as soon as you get to work or school, trouble is there to find you. As soon as you think you got away from it at school, you go to the beauty shop, and there's somebody with some trouble. You run from the beauty shop and go to the grocery store, hoping that you will run away from trouble. But trouble finds a way at the grocery store. So you think you gonna come into the house of God and figure it all out. And trouble is waiting for you in the house of God. Is there anybody in here that's experienced trouble? But the by or the psalmist wrote, it's all right because the Lord will make a way somehow. God will make a way somehow. Put your hands together and say the Lord will make a way somehow just when you thought trouble was over you ask God God when will it end when will the hurt stop when will the pain ease just a bit when will people stop mistreating me when will folk appreciate me for who I am when will trouble go and find somebody else only to find out and realize that even after you tell trouble to leave you alone it ain't went nowhere because trouble is and always will be trouble has a way of finding you you wake up in the morning and remember there's trouble waiting on you so you reset your alarm clock pull the covers back over your head and pray to God when I wake back up I hope the trouble will be over you sleep for two and three more hours and wake up only to find that trouble standing at the foot of your bed. You can't run away from trouble but I've come to tell you the Lord will make a way somehow. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise. Trouble is not a new thing. Trouble has been and always will be. The thing about it is the saints of God can still give God praise in the midst of the trouble. The saints of God can still glorify the name of the Lord even in the midst of it all. How can you praise God when all hell is breaking loose in your life? How can you praise God when everything seems to go wrong? Because I know the the Lord has made a way before and if he's made a way he'll do it again touch your neighbor and say he'll do it again trouble 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 is always there it is not a new thing it was rooted in the in the in the bowels of slavery when the slaves had the trouble they wrote a song that was recorded by Louis Armstrong and the song said nobody knows the trouble I've seen nobody knows my sorrow nobody knows the trouble I've seen but then they go on and say glory hallelujah sometimes I'm up oh yes Lord glory hallelujah and sometimes I'm down oh yes Lord glory hallelujah but it goes on to say I'm almost level to the ground oh yes Lord glory hallelujah and then it says if you get there before I do Tell all my friends I'm coming to glory, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. And Elder Carly, here's where you preach my message. I find it ironic about this song. What I find ironic is even though the slaves had trouble, they still told the Lord yes. Even though they went through some things in their life, they still told the Lord. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They still told the Lord yes could it be that the reason why so much 
trouble is in your life is because you haven't told the Lord yes. God wants you to tell him yes. You've been running from Jesus for a long time and you wonder why you got so much trouble. It's because God wants you to tell him yes. Yes. But that's a different message for a different time. We're here to talk about trouble. Our text begins in the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. And it comes at a time when Elijah was being pursued by Jezebel. And he was being pursued by Jezebel. And he was so afraid of Jezebel that he ran from Jezebel. And when he ran from Jezebel, he ran into the wilderness and he wanted to die. Have you ever been in so much trouble that all you wanted to do was just give it up and say that I don't feel like going on, I, I, I don't feel like living, I don't feel like moving on any further, it hurts so bad, the problems are so rough in my life, I just want to die. Well, Elijah had that. Now to understand why Elijah was running from Jezebel, we have to go back and visit chapter number 18. Because it was in chapter number 18, how, that, that, that Elijah had done something uh, that made Jezebel mad. Uh, and she didn't find out about what he had did uh, until verse number 19. Uh, so if we look at verse number 18, uh, it tells me that Elijah uh, had went to the prophets of Baal. Uh, and he had told the prophets of Baal there were 450 prophets uh, because Elijah knew that the children of Israel uh, had left the, the, the glory of God. Uh, they had left their first love which was the Lord. Uh, and so some of them started serving Baal and so Elijah had to come the prophet had to come and tell them that you're going to die if you don't run back to the Lord you see I don't like a prophet that tells me in three days there'll be a new Cadillac in my driveway I don't like a prophet that tells me in four days your bank account will be full I got a job I can fill up my own bank account I want a prophet to tell me that if you're not living right you will die die in your sin. That's what a true prophet is. A prophet ain't always good news. But a prophet will tell you, you need to leave him alone. You need to leave her alone. Because they ain't no good for you. That's what a true prophet will do. Do I have a witness this morning? And so Elijah came and gave a prophecy to the children of Israel. As a matter of fact, in the 21st verse, he said, "When how long will you be hot between two opinions if the Lord be God then serve him but if Baal be God then serve him I've come to tell you some of us are playing with God we haven't sold out to God we want to play with the world and we want to play with God but God said I'm not having that if the world be God then you serve the world but if God be God you need to serve him say yes somebody and so Elijah he went and told the prophetic word to the children of Israel and said if you do not adhere to what I'm saying that you will pay the consequences well Baal had 450 prophets and Elijah said to show you that my God is real I want to take the 450 prophets that you have and I want them to meet me up on top of Mount Carmel and he said when we get up to Mount Carmel what I want you to do is build an office uh, uh, altar for Baal and you cut a bull and set it on the altar and then I'll get an altar for God and I'll cut a bull and set it on the altar and what I want you to do prophets of Baal is I want you to call down your God and I want him to send fire down. Someone say fire. I want him to send fire down. And when you call upon your God of Baal, the fire will come down and he take up the, the bull that we put on there. So they began to cry out Baal. Send the fire. And nothing happened. They said it again Baal. Send the fire. And nothing happened. Have you ever thought that the person 
person you're calling on is not the right person. The thing that you're calling on is not the right thing. He said, Baal, send the fire. Now in the 27th verse, Elijah got cocky and started making fun of the prophets and said, maybe he's asleep. Why don't you call him a little louder? They cry louder, Baal, Baal, send the fire. So I know I'm preaching this thing. Someone say fire. And Baal didn't show up. They started taking knives and cutting themselves in the ritual that they had to call on the fire. They jumped around erratically and said, Baal, Baal, send the fire. But nothing happened. But I want to show you how good God is. Elijah said, dig a trench around the altar of God. Go get a lot of buckets of water and pour the waters upon the bull. And when they poured the water on the bull, the water saturated the wood. It ran off the altar and filled up the trench. And Elijah said, God, God, send the fire. The Bible said that the fire fell from heaven, took up the offering, ate up the wood, dried up the water. God is a God who can prove himself. Look at your neighbor and tell him that God is going to send the fire. And so it is that after he embarrassed the, the prophets of Baal and he killed the prophets of Baal, he then comes to the 19th chapter and Ahab, who was Jezebel's husband, told Jezebel that Elijah the prophet, the prophet of God, had destroyed the prophets of Baal. Now you've got to look at the name Jezebel. The name Jezebel in the Hebrew means that who exalts Baal. She was actually the granddaughter of the God of Baal. And so she exalted Baal. And so Ahab told Jezebel that Elijah had done this. And so Jezebel in the second chapter, the second verse says that what you have done to the prophets, I'm going to do to you by this time tomorrow. You see, that's where she messed up. If you really wanted to get him, you shouldn't have warned him. But how many know that God is warning you, telling you the devil is coming? You better run by this time tomorrow. And so when he heard that Jezebel, that who exalts Baal, was chasing after him, he got afraid. He got scared. Now what I didn't understand is how you could fight with 450 prophets and let a woman run you from the presence of God. But I heard her saying, hell hath no fury like a woman's scorn. You mess with a woman's baby, she'll mess you up. And so he ran from this woman. He ran for his life. That's why the psalmist wrote, David, I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side and I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. running for my life. I'm getting ready to close now. So in the third verse, I want to show you how Elijah messed up. The Bible said that he ran and he took his servants to the city of Beersheba which is belongeth to Judah. The Hebrew word Beersheba means sevenfold. And we all know that the perfect number of God is seven. And we all know that the Hebrew word Judah, I've taught you this before, means praise. So he left the sevenfold of God. He left the praise of God and he went into the wilderness. Someone say wilderness. The name wilderness 
is Midbar in the Hebrew. It is an uninhabited place. It is a desert place. Now what you got to know about the wilderness or the desert that he went to is that nothing grew in the desert. Nothing grew in the wilderness. So here Elijah was running from the completeness of God, running from the praise of God into a desert place where nothing grows because he's running for his life. But look at your neighbor, say neighbor, don't run to the wilderness, but stay in praise. Don't run to the desert, but stay in praise. Don't run away, but stay in praise. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. And so now that he ran, Billy, he said these words, I'm running for my life. And the reason why I'm running for my life is because I had enough. I can't take it anymore. Is there anybody in here that felt like you couldn't take it anymore? You felt like you had enough every time you turn around. Trouble finds you. Every time you try to do right, you find yourself doing wrong. Is there anybody in here that can tell the devil, I've had enough of you. I had enough of your tricks. I had enough of your playing with me. I had enough of you taking me through. I've had... I'm not going to go into the wilderness where things don't grow, Shalon, but I'm going to stay right there in the middle of praise. And so Elijah said that it is enough, or I had enough, and I come to tell you today, as I get ready to take my seat, that when you feel that you've had enough, my God is, my God is, my God is my God is my God is enough when you feel you've had enough my God is enough is there anybody is there somebody that feels like you had enough you can't take another thing you can't take another test you can't take another problem everything seems to be going wrong is there anybody Anybody that feels like throwing in the towel, but I come to tell you, God is, God is, God is, God is, He is enough. How do you know He's enough? Because the Bible said, when you feel weak, it said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When your day is dark, your situation is dark, your life is dark, your outlook is dark. John says he's the light in the time of darkness. When you feel that nobody loves you, the Bible said he loved you so much that he gave his only son. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. He is enough. He is enough. How do you know he's enough? Because the Bible said he was bread for the hungry. He is enough. He's a lily in the valley. He is enough. He's a bride and morning star. He is enough. Do you know him today? Do you know him today? He cannot be defeated. He is enough. No cross can kill him. No cross can kill him. No grave can hold him. No devil can control him. Tell your neighbor he is enough. He's a water when you're thirsty. He is a friend to the friendless. He's a mother to the motherless. Do I got a witness today? Is he enough for you? He is my joy in the time 
of sorrow. Do you know him today? He is a doctor when you're sick. He is a lawyer when you're in trouble. Do I have a witness this morning? He was a clown by day. He was a pillar by night. Someone say he is. He is. He is enough. Touch your neighbor and ask your neighbor. Say neighbor. Do you know him? Say neighbor. Do you know him? He carried your cross to Calvary. He conquered the grave. He took the sting out of death and he forgave your sins. Neighbor. He is enough. Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? So say yeah. He's a king of creation. He's the blood of atonement. He's the joy in the time of sorrow. He is enough. Somebody called him king of kings. Somebody called him the Lord of lords. But whatever you call him, I call him wonderful counselor, prince of peace, and I call him Kim enough. Someone say he is enough. Someone say he is enough. His name in Hebrew is Jehovah. If you need him to provide, he is Jehovah Jireh. God, my provider. If you need healing, he is Jehovah Rapha. God that heals. He is the God of banner. He is Jehovah Nisi. Whatever in you call him, you gotta say he is he is enough. He's a God of salvation. The center and the creator of the universe. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Well, he is enough. Billy, I wish I could explain him like I really wanted to describe him. But he is indescribable. He is unimaginable. He is irreplaceable. He is incomprehensible. And he is irresistible. And most of all, he is an incredible, incredible, incredible God. Say yeah. Say yeah. I wish I had a church this morning. He's enough in the storm. He's enough in the problems that you're going through. So say yeah. He's enough. He's enough. The Bible explains him as being awesome. He is almighty. He is accurate. He never makes a mistake. He is. He is. He is enough. He's bountiful. He's beautiful. He is brilliant God. He is enough. And whatever you call him, he'll come in and tell you that whatever you're going through, he is He's enough. 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 Uh -huh. I'm talking to you. He's enough. I'm talking to you. He is enough. He'll fix every problem that you go through. He is enough. Uh, Billy, I don't care what you go through. He's enough. Uh, I don't care how hard it gets. He's enough. Uh, have you tried Jesus? Uh, someone said he is. Uh, all right. Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and tell your neighbor. Uh, say neighbor. Uh, have you tried my Jesus? Uh, he is. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. There's nothing my God cannot do. 
nothing my God cannot do. We serve an awesome and mighty God. We serve an everlasting Father. We serve a mighty and wonderful God. If you don't get excited by calling on the name of God, something is wrong with you. If you don't get excited when you know that God has blessed you to wake up this morning, started you on your way, put food on your table, you walking around here like you did that yourself. If it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't have been able to walk in this church today. But yet you run from him like you don't owe him your life. You run from him like you don't owe him your everything. But I heard a psalmist say, if anyone should ever write my life story for whatever reason there might be it goes on to say Jesus is he your best thing this morning is he your best thing this morning he's enough he's enough you don't need nobody else but God is enough God is enough I wish everybody caught this message. Some of y'all still sitting there looking at me like I'm crazy. Looking like I done stole your lunch money. But when you think of how good God is, and when you think of how good God has been to you, my God from Zion, I may not have everything that I want, but I got everything that I need. He is enough. I may not have a million dollars in a bank, but I got money in my pocket. He is enough. I may not have the best car, but I got a car. He is enough. I may have to walk, but at least I'm walking. He is enough. I may be sick in my body, but at least I got breath in my lungs. He is. Somebody need to hear me today. He is enough. I may not have the finest suit, but I got clothes to put on. He is enough. Our church may not be filled to compassion here, but you are here today. God is enough. God is enough. He's enough. He's enough. He's enough. And he's some on top of that. And he builds on top of that. God is that ought to preach to you today he is enough he's more than enough you don't understand I don't have the education level with some he's enough I'm not qualified for that job he is enough I'm not qualified to do that. He is enough. Do I got a witness this morning that God is enough? Have you tried Jesus and found him to be all right? Have you tried Jesus and found him to be a way maker? Have you tried Jesus and found him to be enough? He's enough. If everyone would stand to your feet. Well, if you didn't get it, it ain't because I didn't preach it. If you walk out of here the same way you came, it ain't because I didn't pour my heart into this one. I done told you he's enough in your situation. He's enough in your valley experience. He's enough. Touch your neighbor and say, he's enough. He's enough. He's enough. I want you to go find somebody. This is the altar call right here. Won't our altar ministry come? But then I, if you're not going to come here, I want you to go find some. Matter of fact, come on up this way. Everybody. Everybody, come on up this way. You see, some of us won't come because we, wanna, we don't want people to think that we're going through some stuff. I'm not too proud to let you know I need God to pray for me. Come on. I want you to link up. I want you to link up. Link up with somebody. Link up with somebody. And we're going to have corporate prayer. Father God, we thank you for just one more day. Oh Lord, you woke us all up this morning. And Lord, you've been so good to us, so kind and so merciful.
Oh Lord Jesus, the thanksgiving is in our hearts this day. Thanksgiving for all that you do. Oh, for Lord, you do enough. Oh, you blessed us and you kept us, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, you brought us up from where we were. Oh, and Lord, you set us up on high. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are enough. I thank you for mercy and grace. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are enough. I thank you for each and every soul that's assembled here. Oh, Lord, you know what they stand in need of. Oh, Lord, you know each and every situation. Oh, each and every condition. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are enough. Oh, to handle anything. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray. Oh, that you would touch each soul. Oh, each member. Oh, each home. Oh, Lord Jesus, help them to look up to you. Oh, Lord, help them to depend upon you. For, Lord, you are enough. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are my life.